Hi, in this video we'll see how to create a web application to put two LLM models to compete in the one versus one snake game. We will create this in a Streamlit application using Linechain. Okay, I used this application for the LLMs hackathon of Streamlit and I was one of the winners under the Linechain category. So this app made me won this hackathon. And in this application we can select one model here and another model for the second user, for example, GPT-4 Turbo versus GPT-4 in the snake game. And we can select the temperature for everyone and the prompt template for everyone this prompt template will be applied at every turn so these two models we are selecting them we are configuring them like this these two agents and when we press the play button they will start competing in this uh, snake game let's put this a little bit faster because they take some seconds to respond at every turn so they are now playing turn by turn and we can also see here some metrics of the completion tokens the cost of every model and the response time for example so we see here the agent one is taking less tokens less time and less money so the turbo now it's more efficient and we saw that in this case the agent one won okay so we'll see how to develop this web application but also we'll see as an extra part how to implement this in our web portfolio if you remember in a previous video i show you how to create your data and ai web portfolio with your own information your curriculum here you can add this to your own information so in this web portfolio you will be able to include this new project as a new page here and we'll be adding the future projects as a new pages okay before going to the code let's see better how this app is working in the backend so first the user they select the model for every agent so here in the left a screen uh, we have the agent one and as blue we have the agent 2 so we have to first select the model in each case we use Langchain to declare these chat models and also the prompt template for every agent so we can put the same or different ones so we have to define here the system message and the human message uh, for the prompt of every agent and we have to put in these curly braces the placeholders to update this information at every turn so at every turn as you can see here when the game starts we start with an initial configuration with an initial board state and the game engine is the one that is calling for every agent to each model with every prompt template with the board state information updated so the only thing that changes at every turn call to every model is the board state so the prompt template is the same uh, for every model at every case and the board state is updated to every turn so then the model receives okay the instructions to play the game with the current board state and it responses with some reasoning optionally and also with the direction with an emoji arrow that they want to play for the next turn so everyone responds for its own snake and they see all the board information and the game engine takes this response the emoji arrow especially it applies this information for example in this case the agent 2 the blue snake is going left and the Asian one the green snake is going down so it's applying this logic and it's repeating this process until any snake dies so the other one wins or the turns get to its maximum that i put here a maximum of 100 turns so the game engine is responsible to apply this logic and to call to every asian model at every turn and they are playing like this so in the code we will have four python scripts to develop this application those are the app.py the game engine the board plot and the agent.py we'll be developing them from bottom up because the app.py is the main one that is calling to game engine and also some information from agent.py file and then the game engine when the game starts it's calling to board plot and agents.py at every turn so we'll be developing first agent.py then board plot.py game engine and finally the app.py from bottom up every one of these four files and extending from the very basics to the more elaborated functions how everything works and at the end we will be able to make the final website to work okay so let's start coding the project so you have to create a folder in your computer i call it st llms arena okay like uh, streamlit llms arena and here now we have to open the terminal and make sure that you are in the current folder of the project okay and now here we can create the git repository with git init dash v main and now we have the git repository here created now we can create the virtual environment like this this is optional but it's quite recommended now we have here the vmv the virtual environment created and now we can install the libraries that we'll be using today so we have to activate first the virtual environment if you create it like this in windows and now that we have here the virtual environment activated as we see we can install the libraries for today which are those seven of here numpy pandas streamlit openai langchain tiktoken and opencv so let's install them okay now it's a good idea also to create the git ignore file so in the git ignore file we can add all of those paths and files basically to not tracking them with git so we won't be tracking the virtual environment for example okay now it's time to create the requirements txt file to have all the python dependencies in there 
and we can do it with pipfreeze, requirements, txt. And this will be very helpful, for example, if we want to deploy this application in the Streamly Cloud for free, then the Streamly Cloud will know which Python libraries it has to install with this file up here. And that will be the setup for the project. And now we are able to start coding the application. We can close the terminal for now. And we have to start creating the agents.py file. Agents.py will start by declaring the libraries that we have to import. So we'll be using time, logging, also random, Langchain, and from Langchain, we'll be using different modes, especially to create the template, the chat template, the human message, and the system message, and also the OpenAI callbacks to get some more information from every model response. So we'll be getting from it some metrics like the price and the number of tokens that it took, and we'll be tracking those metrics as well. We'll be setting the login config to info like this. This is only to check that the application is working as expected. Then we'll define the list of available models, and we'll do it like this. We'll first put the model provider, the the three that we'll be using are from OpenAI, but if in the future we have more models from other providers, it will be good to put first the name, okay, then and space, then the name of the model as the API wants it, okay, so it's very important to put it correctly. So this is how OpenAI defines the, the GPT 3.5, GPT 4 Turbo. I put here the explanation of the model because it's not obvious that this is the Turbo, and this is the normal GPT 4. So the format that we'll be using is to take the second part to call the API. So it's very important to have a first part of the provider, second part of the model name, and optionally a third part describing what model is it if it's not obvious from this name of here. Okay, now we have to define the default prompts for the agent one and agent two. Here we have the agent one one. So we can see here all the instructions that we are providing by default to the user. So then they know better how to define them. And it's very important to see that it's difficult, but this is a list, okay? And we have two strings. This one, this is the system message prompt, okay? And this one of here, the second one is the human message prompt. So this is one prompt that I found that it works, but this could be done better. So this is an approach that after trying some different prompts, I find that this works. And it's very important to notice here, these placeholders or these variables, that they will be replaced at every turn by the board state with these two formats. The first one is a string with the board made of emojis, okay? It's a representation of the board in two dimensions made with emojis all the cells we'll see now in the next step how to do this and in this one we are sending the simple string representation of the word in a json format let's say so we are sending it in these two formats and there is a third one but we don't need all three those are three options that we give to the user and a single one is already okay probably and we can add two but it's important to notice that the more of those that we add they will increment the cost of every turn because these are taking more input tokens so every turn will be costing more for this agent if we add three methods instead of one one or two so it's better to put only two and now here we have the default prompt two and it's the same format let's say we have here the system message very similar as the one of before and then we have here the instruction the human message instructions but uh, in a different way i was trying here a different way so we can test the same model with these two different prompts or put one of these prompts the same in the two agents with different models to test them better and here one interesting thing we have here as before the charge board not the emojis board that is made of characters not of emojis the two dimensions board and it's very important to see that in the two cases we have to tell the agent that it has to return its direction that the snake wants to play in this emojis arrow format because it is the way that our code will be taking that response so our code will look into every agent response and it will look if there is any emoji arrow and the first one that it finds it will be that the direction that it will apply for every of the snakes of every agent let's say so now the next step is to define this method to convert from the word state to the different strings that we can and convert it especially the charge board and the emojis board so this function of here the board to chart function will do that it will receive the board config that is another dictionary of the different static operation of the board and then this function will receive the board state as well that this will be changing at every turn and we have also the type of the string to return because we have the emojis and the charge type so both will be very similar but as you can see here if charge type is emojis we'll build this board using these six emojis and if charge type is underscore gbr then it will be building this board using the characters underscore G, B, and R, okay? So we have to tell in the prompt if we are using one method or the other. In this case, for example, this second agent, the default prompt 2, was using the charge board. So it's telling that the capital G is the head of the green snake, the capital B is the head of the blue snake, and so on. So you have to tell how the agent 
patient will be receiving the board information and you have to make it understand the position of every snake and so and then basically it's building a for loop to build for every cell from the y axis and the x axis okay using the board config grid size so for this reason we're using board config to make it adjustable for the size of the board in our case we'll be using a grid a board of 15 by 15 cells okay not a very large one so it will be putting every cell its value if that x and y coordinate is the snake one body it will put the snake one body or head depending if it's the first part of the body or not then the same for the agent two so it will be putting the blue snake if that x and y coordinate is the snake two body if that x and y is word state foot it will put a foot depending on if it's we can see here if it's an apple or an r so it will be putting that character in that place of the word representation and otherwise if in that x and y position is not any snake body or foot it will put a uh, the empty cell so we have to build this function of here and then it converts this list of characters to a full string and now to validate that this function is really working we can put here at the end of the file so we'll be leaving this at the end of the file this test case that it will be running only if we run this agent.py file it won't run normally in the normal app but this can test to validate that this is working and this will allow us also to modify if you want any color or any other parameter so we'll be defining here this board config that as you see it's a dictionary of parameters but those will be the same for all the game then here is a board state that this will be changing at every turn and as you can see a board state is basically a dictionary that has the turn information it starts with the turn zero then the snake one information so we have here the body that is a list with coordinates okay every coordinate is a position of uh, one part of the snake one body so in this case it starts with four body parts so the score of this snake is four now and always the first part is the head okay this is very important so the head of every snake will be the first body position and then the direction that is currently pointing at this point it's r of right and if it's alive or not so for now it's true and the same for the snake too and also here is the foot that is a list also of coordinates and every one every single coordinate it's a different foot so let's see now let's run this board to char uh, with the board config and the board state uh, with emojis and also the same with the gbr with the character so let's see if this works now we have to save the agent.py file we can open the terminal and here we can do like python agents.py and we can see that it's printing something so first it's printing the emojis board as we see here the full board with emojis so here we have the agent one the green snake and the agent two the circle is the head and the squares the blue squares are the body of the second snake and the apple emojis are the foot okay and the same board state we have it here with this other format that is with characters and here we see the green snake okay with the g's the blue snake with the v's and the r is the the foot okay so this is what the board to char function is doing basically we send it the board config and board state and it returns this string that is representing in these two different ways the board and the third way to represent the board for the prompt template is simply passing this dictionary of here as a json let's say as a string format but this raw information of here that maybe it can be even better for the model because it's a more synthetic way of understanding every important element where it's placed uh, without having all the empty cells for example but the user has these three options to choose so the user can try with different prongs and these certain board states formats which one is better okay and now we'll be defining one function to do the calls to the api and get the, the agent response one of the core functions and it's called the get agent action okay i put here a uh, uh, a description of what this function is doing let's put in multiple lines maybe so basically this function allows us to send the agent number okay because this will be used for agent one and agent two so this agent will be an integer one or two depending on which agent is called then the llm it's the langchain llm chat that it will be used to call to that model here this can be the langchain chat model of uh, gpt4 or the gpt4 turbo or the gpt 3.5 so this is sent here directly to know that this agent has to call to this chat model then the prompt template uh, the board config the board state as we see before and this uh, optional parameter to test it so let's see here so if it's not test so the normal behavior of this function will declare this template okay this chat prompt template from the two messages the system message and the human message using the system message prompt template and the human message prompt template 
Then in this next step, we're defining the emojis board and the charts board with the board to chart as we saw just in a moment, and also the board state string that is simply the board state dictionary. So we are converting it to a string. And we can create finally the final messages. I call it here, but it's the full prompt with all the user defined prompt templates and the emojis board, charge board, or board state, the board state information into it. And it's passing here the final message, the final string for the message to send to the agent. Here we can optionally uh, load this into the terminal to, to see better what's happening from the terminal. Otherwise, we'll be displaying it also in the UI. And here uh, we are doing the call to the API with this OpenAI callback. So we'll get the agent response, but also in this CV, in this callback, we'll have some extra information about the pricing that it took, that request to the model, and also the tokens that were in the prom input and the response of the model. We are also with time here, as you see, measuring the time from here to here. So we are measuring the seconds that it takes for the model to respond. So we'll be taking these three metrics for every model. The time that it takes to respond, the tokens that the input token and the response token, and the price that it took that turn to play. So that response from the model. So this will be very good to test, not only which model is better playing at the snake, but also how many resources and time are taking. Then this step is also very important because we'll be looking in this agent response that will be the text response from the model. We'll be looking if there is the upper arrow or the downwards arrow, the left arrow or right arrow. So we'll be looking for this character in the response. So if it finds that there is the upper arrow, it will tell, okay, direction equals to U of up. If it's the downwards arrow, the D of down, and the same for L and R, okay, left and right. And uh, if the, the model doesn't respond any emoji because it fails to understand this instruction, it will put none. So our logic will do that the, the snake uh, has to follow the previous direction that it was already taking. It won't change the direction. It's also very important to understand that if the snake had one direction and it takes the opposite in the next turn, it will die because it will crash into its own body. So it's very important also that the model doesn't do that kind of thing that sometimes happens. So our gate agent action will return all of this information, the direction, okay, this letter that represents the direction that the model took, the agent response to display it, uh, the full message, the LLM time, the total time in seconds, the CV, the callback completion tokens, that will be how many tokens it took, only the completion part, not the input, and also the callback total cost. What was the total cost from input and response? And here we have the test case, okay? If we want to test the app logic, the game part, let's say the game engine, and we don't want to do calls to the API to save some resources. So if it's test, we'll go here, and it wants to sleep 0.5 seconds to simulate the time that it takes the model to respond. And then if the agent is the number one, it goes or down or right randomly. It takes or down or right. And if it's agent two, it goes randomly to up or left. And it returns the direction, this random direction. Then the message test because this is not returning any response from any mod. And then 0.5 seconds that it took this model to respond and zero tokens and zero cost. It's just for, for testing that all of this logic works without having to call to the API. So this is all the agents.py code, okay? We can save this file now. Okay, so now we'll be developing the second script that is the boardplot.py and it will contain only a single function that is the boardplot. And one example of the board plot that what it does, it's for example, if we have this board state, as we saw, this is a dictionary, but we can represent it using emojis. So having this board state of here, the board plot will convert it to this image of here. So we'll be using NumPy and OpenCV to draw these lines, these squares and these circles. Basically, it's the three uh, components of OpenCV that we'll be using to build automatically this board representation. And later, we'll be sending this image of the board to the UI, to the Streamlit application. OK, so let's see how to code it. Let's go here and let's create the board plot.py file. And we have to start by importing these three libraries, okay? OpenCV, it's called CV2, but it's OpenCV, NumPy, and Time. Now we'll start by defining the board plot function, and it will take a board config, board state, and then these two optional parameters, if display and save there. And then we'll start by taking the t0, the initial time, because we can measure the time that it takes to plot to understand if it's more or less efficient. And then we'll be taking the, all the board config and the board state parameters one by one. So here we have the board config uh, dictionary that we are passing here as a parameter of this function. So we take uh, the grid size, the, the 
square size in pixels of every square, the line thickness from the board, the background color, lines color, uh, snake one color, snake two colors, and foot color. So those can be modified with the board config uh, information. And then we have the board state that this will be changing at every turn. We'll have here the position of the snake one body, uh, the direction, the snake two body, snake two direction, and foot. So the board plot will know where to plot everything in that image that we saw before. Now in the following lines, we'll be building the grid, okay? So here we have the grid thickness and it's calculated like this. Grid thickness will be the same dimensions of pixels in the height and the width. So with this grid thickness, we are building this initial image, this empty image with NumPy full of ones. Of this grid thickness by this grid thickness and three channels because it's a color image. And we are painting all of this with the background color at the end. So we are multiplying these ones by the background color. So we are putting this uh, background color for every channel and we are converting this NumPy array to uint 8 so every value is an integer of 8 bits now in this for loop we build the vertical lines as you see here using the cb2 line to place the vertical ones and the very similar to, to place the, all the horizontal lines so it goes one by one placing every vertical line and every horizontal line in every part of this loop then here we'll be defining an internal function we could be defining this outside of the main function but it's the same so this will be in charge of plotting every body position and every foot position. So if it's not an empty cell, this draw pose will, will be drawing it and it will take the target position. So at which coordinates this uh, square has to be plotted and which color basically. And if it's head or not, because in the head we'll be placing the ace of the snake head and also the direction because the ace are pointing to the direction that the snake is looking. And if it's not head, it will be simply a foot or a body position with a simple color. So we start by getting the coordinates of the square with this logic to know that from that coordinates what are the pixel coordinates that the square will take and we will be painting this rectangle from the square top left pixel to the square bottom right pixel in this color that we choose here okay and now if it's a head basically uh, with this code of here depending on the direction if it's r or l we're painting the ace uh, with the outer part the white part and the smaller part of the ace with the black circle so we have to do all of this logic only to paint the ace you can see here the ace of the snake so it's basically two circles that are pointing into the direction that the snake is looking and finally here with opencv circles we are painting these four circles for every snake in the coordinates and dimensions that we define here and the colors so now we'll be using this function that we just defined the draw pose function to paint all the snake one the snake two and the foot positions and here we will go for every snake one body position without the head okay so this is a list and we are taking all the body positions from snake one without counting the first one so we are skipping the first one and all the other ones we are painting it as normal body parts okay remember this uh, parameter here that if it's head or not and here we are taking only the first body position the head okay and it's the same the snake one color but now the parameter is head is true now so and we are taking the snake one direction to paint the ace in this initial body position of the snake one that is the head and the same for the snake two and with foot we are for every foot position if there is any we are painting that position with the foot color now we'll have this final image of the board complete and we are basically converting it again to uint 8 just in case if any of those transformations was converting this numpy array to a larger format and then if this display is true we want to display this into our computer so we are using the opencv methods i'm show white k and destroy all windows to display this image until some key is pressed and also if safety is declared so if we pass this safety as a folder of our computer it will be saving the image to the given folder with this name of here the name of the turn underscore turn and dot png so it will be saving into this folder of here the image otherwise it will be returning the image to the ui this is the normal function so normally safety will be none and we'll be returning the image to the streamlit application but now for testing as we'll see now we'll be saving this to this folder of here so now to test that the board plot function is really working, we can put these lines of code. So again, if name is main, so if we are running boardplot.py, not any other script, let's do this test case. So we are defining these configs again. So this is a board config, the same as we'll have in the application. And then this example board state, and we are calling the board plot with these parameters. Is this play true? Because we want to see now the image and save the image also in this main directory. So now we can save the with control S the board plot.py. Okay, we just add these lines of here and let's call python board plot.py 
Okay, I made a typo here in the name of the board plot.py. Uh, it's board with the D. I missed the D. Board plot.py. Now I can call it again. And we see here displaying the, the image of this board state of here. So we have the snake one, the green one, with this 5, 2, 4, 2, 3, 2 coordinates, okay? So we can see that it starts the coordinate with 0. So the first one is x, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then uh, this is the x, and the y is 0, 1, 2. So in the 5, 2, we have the head, the initial coordinate here. And the same for the blue snake. And we see that there is no food here declared, so we don't see any food. Now, if we go here and we put some food, uh, let's put it in the 5.5. Five. Uh, I think that there is not any snake part there. Let's save it now. Let's run again this logic. Have to close this window. Let's run it again. And now in the 5.5, five, we see this food position, this food cell. We can add some more. So let's add one to the 7.10, for example. Let's save it now. Let's close the previous window and let's run this again. And now we see this second foot cell here. So this is working and you can test now to change the dimensions of the line thickness or the colors if you want, or you can try to play with this board configs, for example, and try different conditions. Also try to check that the eyes are really working. So here we see that the snake one is looking to the right. So um, yeah, the green snake is looking to the right, the blue snake is looking to the left. So the eyes are really working. And that will be the board plot.py file. And now it's very important to do this step of here to repeat this as it's here, okay? This initial snake one configuration and initial snake two configuration as they are here without any food because this will be the initial frame for our application. So we can run this board plot again. And this image, we have to save it here as 000 underscore turn PNG because this will be the initial board configuration that we'll be displaying to our application. So it's very important to leave it as this at least, okay? With this state of here, without any food, and with this name of here, because our streamlit application, it will start always with this frame of here, and later it will be updating it to the consecutive board states, but always will be starting the application displaying this exact board configuration of here. Okay, now that it's here, the 00 turn PNG, we can close this window and close the terminals. And we can go for the next part that will be the game engine.py. We have to create this new file, game engine.py. Okay, so we'll start the game engine by importing this library, streamlit, random, copy, pandas, and also the board plot and the agents that we just defined before. Okay, so we will be importing the board plot function and the gate agent action from these two files that we have here. Then the next step is to get this board config and board state zero. Uh, as we saw before, these two dictionaries are the board config that won't change and the initial state, very similar as we just seen in the previous step. Then we'll declare two functions and one dictionary that will be helping us in the next steps. So the first one is this place food function that will be randomly placing food in the cells whenever it's called. So basically this function creates a new coordinate randomly from zero to the maximum grid size minus one. This is for X and this is for Y. So it's basically creating a random coordinate inside the board. And then it tries to see if that coordinate is in any body position of the snake one or two or in a previous food position. And if it's the case, it tries to create a new one again. So it repeats this cycle in this while loop at least for 50 turns until it finds a proper new foot position. So repeating this uh, while loop, we have to see here that it doesn't fit in the entire line, but here it checks that it's doing this only for 50 iterations. And if it's more than 50 iterations, it stops of trying to put a new foot position. Now we will define this function, the move snake function, that it will take the board state, the current dictionary of the board state, and also one snake. This is the dictionary of the snake one or snake two, depending on the agent that is calling this function. And basically is taking the head, the first body position of that snake body. And if the snake direction, that is also in the snake dictionary. So if this snake deer is U of up, then it takes the head X and head Y, okay? The X coordinate of the head and Y coordinate of the head. And in this case, to go up, it has to remove one number to the Y coordinate, okay? So the previous head now will be the second body part. So it's creating a new head towards that direction. In this case, it was upwards, but to go downwards is the opposite. So it's adding one to the Y direction. So the new coordinate of the head will be X will be the same as before and Y will be adding one to go one downwards. And very similarly for left and right, we are uh, subtracting one to the X or adding one to the X position. So this will be the new head coordinates and we'll be inserting to this body snake position, we'll be inserting 
this new head position to the zero position and here we'll be checking if this new head position of that snake it was a foot position and if this was the case we'll be removing this foot position that was in that place and we'll be placing simply the new snake head but it will have like the same body as before so the tail will be in the same place and we'll be adding one head position so this snake now will have one body part more so it will have one score more because the score is the number of parts of the body and if head is not in board state foot so if the new head position is not a foot position then we'll be popping the last position of the body so the tail so if the snake had four parts before now we'll still have four parts because we add one to the head towards the direction that was pointing but we'll be removing the last body position so the, the snake will be advancing one position having the same body parts only if the new head position is in a foot position will be remaining the tail and adding one to the head having one position more in the body then we'll also declare this dear to arrow dictionary to convert from any character to its arrow direction up down left and right and none will be the x and now we'll start declaring the main function of the game so this will contain all the game logic and it's a game engine function and it takes the board config board state zero um, the lm1 lm2 okay these are the lang chain chat models then the prompt template one and prompt template two so this is called from the app.py okay from the um, ui with all of this information then these four spaces that are this board image space turn counter plot space and agent spaces and these are ui elements that the app.py declares empty and the game engine will take in order to fill with the new updated information or images of the board or it will be updating at every turn all of this information and messages from every agent uh, for every turn that they are playing Okay, so we start this function by doing a deep copy of the board state zero. So this will be the board state dictionary updated at every turn. And we can create here a game history list. So we'll be here in this game history appending all the turn data at every turn uh, that it's happening in this uh, dictionary format in a JSON style more or less. We'll start also the game over variable as false and the turn as zero, okay, the turn counter. And now we'll start the main loop of the game. So this is the, the main loop, let's put it here. So this loop at every turn will run. So this will be running while the game is not over. And also while the number of turns is less than the board config max turns, that it's 100 for now by default. So while the game is not over, so any snake hasn't died, and also the turn counter is less than the maximum turns, the, the game will go to the next turn. Now we'll update the turn counter with uh, adding one and also saving this to the board state dictionary and we'll be placing some food so we'll start every turn placing some food if the total board food so this is a list of every board food coordinate so if there are less than two food cells we'll place a new food position with the place food function that we defined before and if this returns a food position that is not known we'll be appending to the board state food list this new food position okay so now it's the agent's turn and we are calling here for agent one and agent two you see here the get agent action, that function that we defined before. So we are calling it twice, one for agent one and one for agent two. And we are telling, okay, agent one, agent two, the integer of the agent. We are calling here the LLM one, LLM two. Okay, these are the um, line chain models, the chat models. Uh, this contains, uh, if it's a GPT-3, GPT-4, so this contains also the model that the API has to call. Then here we have the prompt template from the UI that the user has defined or the default ones if uh, they didn't change it. Also the board config and the board state. And this will return the Asian action, very important. From the arrow, it will return the letter from the snake iteration and also the response and the time, completion tokens and cost as we saw before. It's very important to notice here that we are calling this get Asian action once for the Asian one and we're waiting for its response and then we are calling it for the Asian two. So one thing to improve here would be to do this asynchronously because we can call to both agents, to both models uh, at the same time and don't wait for the response of the first one to call the second one. So we could do this asynchronously in parallel and this would speed the application at least uh, by two more or less. But this is something that I didn't do in the hackathon because I developed this during the LLM hackathon of Streamlit in just three nights so I didn't implement this so now we are taking here the action and if it's not known we'll be updating the snake one direction to the that Asian action and also for the snake two and we'll be then moving with move snake we'll be taking the board state and the new board state snake one okay and we'll be moving that snake towards that direction so now that we already get the model responses and we updated the snake's bodies 
we can check if any of those movements caused any of those snakes to die or both. We have to check if worst state snake one body zero. So this is the head of the snake one. So this is the body of the snake one. So we are looking at the first position and we're looking if that head position, if it's in any of the snake two body parts uh, in case the snake one would die. Then we are checking if the snake one head is in any of the snake one body parts. So we are checking if it has collided to itself. So this would be also a reason for the snake one to die. Then we are also checking if the snake one head is outside the boundaries. So it's less than zero or it's more than the grid size for X and also for Y. So this is the coordinates of the head and we are looking at the X if it's less than zero or more than the grid size. And also we are looking at the Y, okay? If it's less than zero or more than the grid size. So we are looking if it has collided to the walls of the board. So we have here four conditions. If any of those four conditions is true, the snake one is a life parameter that was true before it will be false. And game over will be true because this snake has already died. So the snake two can die as well and it will be a draw. Or if the snake two don't die here, then the snake two will be alive and the game over will be true still but only the snake one would die, so the snake two will win, and the opposite case. So here for the snake two, we have the same condition, to check if the snake two head is inside the snake uh, one body, or if the snake two head is inside the snake two body, or if the snake two head X and Y is outside the boundaries. So any of those four conditions as well will make the snake two is alive parameter to false, and the game over. The same for both. Then here we are appending to the game history list the current turn data with all of the information. Now here that we have all the turn information, it's time to update the layout of the application. And this part of here will look a little bit complex, but you just have to copy it and it's uh, simply the, the messages for every agent. So we have at the center the board frames of the game and at the left part, at the left bar, we have the container one, that is the agent one messages and information and container two, that is the right part and it's the agent two messages and score and information. So we'll be taking these two containers from agent spaces, uh, that is a list with the two containers, basically like this. Uh, this is from Streamlit and then we will be updating the container one with this information uh, to put here the title of the agent one with these html styles to make it look better and so here we have agent one score and the score is the length of the board state snake one body so we are looking the snake one body how many parts has this list so we are looking for the length of this list and this will be the score from the agent one how many body parts it has because the more food it eats it will be longer so the score will be larger and uh, here we have also the two messages because more doesn't fit well so i put here a for loop with two messages or one if there is only one so this is basically doing that looking at the game history messages and if it's a single message uh, so it's the first turn it will display only one message but if there are two messages at least it will display two for every agent first the last one and then the previous one so it will display first in the container one at the left for the agent one as green it will display the number of the turn plus that agent one response that last message and the icon of the arrow of the direction that that agent choose this is a little bit complex but you will see better later in the app how this looks like and it's it's pretty simple but it looks complicated here and the same for the agent two in the container two in the right we are putting here agent two score with the length of each body and the last two messages of the agent two, like this, the number of the turn, the response in text to see what was the reasoning of that model, and also the arrow of that turn. Uh, we are displaying it like this. Now in these lines of here, we are putting the board plot image. So we are taking the board plot uh, function with the board config, board state, and it's display false because now we don't want to display it. And to don't save also this image because it will be directly sent here in this array of here. And we are taking this board's image space, that is the layout center space, that it will be updated at every turn with every new image of every turn. And we have to do it like this to convert it from blue, green, red to red, green, blue. With this slicing method of here of NumPy, we are changing the, the channels order and we are putting here also a title in Markdown to tell which turn is it. So this will be displaying in top of the board images, the counter, and it will be updated every tone counter and every image at every turn. So it will be uh, replacing the previous image and previous information for the new ones. Then in the bottom part of the application, we'll have the metrics that we receive from the agents. 
and we'll be displaying them. So basically we have three metrics, the completion tokens, uh, this one up here, the total cost of the input plus completion tokens, okay, the total cost of every request and disaggregated, and also the response time from every agent. So we'll be doing a line chart of them and also a uh, success, well, uh, a total message with the total, with the sum of the agent one and the sum of agent two. So this success is basically putting a green container with this information from the agent one because success is uh, displayed as green and green is the color of the agent one. And the info is creating another container, blue in this case, with the info of the agent two. So we'll be displaying the aggregated uh, information from completion tokens, also for the cost of input plus completion tokens and also the response time for every agent. So until here, this was the end of the while loop that we saw before, the main loop of every turn logic until the game finishes. And when the game reaches the maximum number of turns or any agent dies, any snake dies, uh, it comes to here to the winning rules and this is checking which snake has win or if they had a draw. So it's checking one by one if the snake one is alive and not board state snake two is alive. So if the snake one is alive and the snake two is not alive, the agent one is the winner. The same but opposite for the snake two. If the snake two is alive but not the snake one, uh, the winner is agent two. Then if both are not alive, that this could happen also if uh, both die at the same time then the winner is draw uh, and also if the game finishes and both are alive that could be also the case uh, it never happened to me because uh, gpt3 and 4 are not that good playing at the snake game so they didn't reach uh, 100 turns but if it's the case that they reach 100 turns and both of them are still alive then it checks if the length of the snake one body is larger than the two then the same one is the winner and if the length of the two is larger than the length of the one then the two is the winner and if both have the same length and they both survive the 100 turns then it's a draw again so these are the six conditions to check if the winner is one two or there is a draw and here at the end in that turn counter that we have uh, on top of the board uh, we display not only the number of turns but also the winner and here we are displaying uh, this toast is a message that is appearing in the browser so we are displaying game over the winner is this one and we put a equal sign if winner is draw and we put a this celebration sign if there was a winner either it's one or two and also if there was a winner so if winner is not draw we are also displaying some balloons and this is the complete logic from the game engine now this will be called from the app.py that will start the application and whenever everything is set all the configurations and the game starts it will call this game engine logic to start with the, the game and updating the layout from it Okay, and now we can already create the last file of the application, the app.py, that will be the entry point for the streamlit. In this file, we'll import streamlit, uh, Langchain, the chat models, the chat OpenAI to declare which models every agent will have. Also, tick token to count the input, uh, how many tokens it has before calling to the API. So we'll be telling the user the prompt template that they are creating, how many tokens is taking. And then we will also importing the game engine and the agents that we just defined before in the agents.py and game engine with this method and these three uh, components that we defined to, to fill the default prompts and the available models in a list. And here we will define a main function that will contain all the page information. So this will be a main function that will contain all the page information. So this function will be quite long. And we start setting the page config like this. So we put the title, the icon of the page that we want the layout to be white to fill the entire width of the browser. And also to start with the sidebar expanded and this information if anyone checks the info you can put here anything else or leave it empty now we can put here the title uh, it's a little bit long but you can see it you can check uh, also in the github or in the blog all the code if you don't see it here let's see if we can see it better now so now that we have this we can already go to the terminal and if you already install all the libraries as we did before with pip uh, we can already run finally the website uh, for now it only has the config and the title but we can already check how it looks like now step by step so we have to do streamlit uh, run uh, remember being here in the path in the terminal of the project and also having bnb the virtual environment activated so we can put here streamlit run app.py that we call to this main file and now if we run it streamlit i made a typo before put the name correctly we'll have here open a new window and we have here now the website 
and now uh, we are not seeing anything because we are not running yet the main function so now it's a good moment to go to here and put if name equals equals to main now we will be running the main function that is not run yet now we can save this Control s okay the app is still running and we go here and we, we check here always rerun and now we see finally the title so the app is already working but we only have declared here in markdown the title and the config so we don't have the, all the logic that we have to display here so now let's define the sidebar i will put this smaller okay so now we are defining the sidebar the left menu sidebar like this with a streamlit sidebar with this context manager we are declaring at first the openai api key as an empty string you can optionally do it like this and for development only uh, as you can see here in this comment and this will be taking your openai api key from your environment variables if you have defined it there uh, somehow uh, but otherwise you can directly do it like this and you will have to introduce your api key in the website in the ui so here in this text input we are asking the user to put its openai api key and this is the type as type password this input because it will be uh, hiding the values of the api key so it's more safe and we pass also this information with this link to know uh, where they can get their api keys if they don't know it yet so here you can create an account in openai put some payment method and you will get your api keys and if the user put any api key this uh, user api key won't be an empty string and we will be passing this value to the openai api key to later call the models and the api calls the next step will be displaying the instructions for the users in this step of here some lines are pretty long but let's see if more or less they are seen okay so basically we are putting here line by line the instructions to play this game okay to use the website you can read them and you can add even more if you find it necessary i put only those instructions so telling okay what is the game about how they can define the prompts using this placeholder that we see before so we have these three options it's not necessary to use all of them then we put here some examples of every, here is the um, emoji board example that it takes more or less 700 tokens. Then we have the charge board example that it's building the board in characters. So you can see that it's taking almost one third of the token that took this one of here. And then we have the third way that is the board state strings. And then we have here some more lines with more instructions. This is not the prompt instructions, okay? This is to explain the user how to use the application, how the game is working. And this is inside this expander that will be optionally displayed. Let's save this file now and let's see the last changes to understand them. So if we come back here to the application in the browser that is running in our computer, we'll see that now we have the left menu here. We can place here the OpenAI API key. I will put now some random values and you see that uh, now it's hidden by default. If we click here, we see the values. These are some random characters, but you will see here the API key and by default it will be safely hidden and we also see here this is the left menu but we see here also the instructions that we put here in this expander uh, next to the title and if we click into here we see these instructions uh, we have to make this larger to see them properly so now we see here the instructions that the user will find whenever it go to our website and it's telling yeah how to play this game and how to use the application um, the examples to understand better the board formats uh, how to pass the board state format at every turn and all the other instructions very importantly that the model has to return an emoji arrow to understand which action it wants to take and all the other instructions that we already know now so this is an optional expandable here for the users and the next section will be the user's input section, so where they will be defining their agents. This has to go here. Here we start by checking if the user has put their OpenAI API key. Uh, otherwise, we are hitting the next things because we want to make sure that the user puts their OpenAI API key. Otherwise, they cannot define their agents because they won't be able to call the API. So we are displaying here a message to make clear that please introduce your OpenAI API key to continue. And if that's the case, so if there is some OpenAI API key, then we are putting here with columns, okay? We are creating three columns. So in the first column, we are putting all the um, input section to declare the demo one, uh, all of this code. So we are starting by letting the user to select the model one from the available models. So in a select box that will be appearing there, it will be uh, able to select one of the available models and then uh, also the temperature in a slider. So this will be another option that we'll be letting to choose to the users, the temperature of every model. 
then we'll be taking this encoder from tick token so later we'll be taking this encoding to count the number of tokens from this prom of here that the user will be declaring and here we are creating the llm1 okay from chat openai so we are using the langchain chat openai to create already the this llm1 that will be that langchain object and with the temperature that the user has defined with the openai key from the user and also from the model name that we are taking if you remember from the agents list here the agent by this available models list we have here every model with the name of the provider and the second parameter is the name of the model so here we are taking that name we are splitting by empty spaces and taking the second part okay that is the name of the model in this way we are discarding the first part and the third part if there is some description of the model then here in expander because this uh, takes more space and it's better to have it optionally displayed or not we have here the text area to define the system message and the other text area to define the human message so the user will be able to define these two messages for the each prompt template and we are taking by default the default prompt one uh, first part okay uh, so here we are taking the default prompt one it was a list if you remember so we're taking the first part for the system message and the second part for the human message we're defining this height for this text area by default and this key and then we are using tick token okay the encoding one from tick token that we define here we are using it to uh, encode that prom message here and we are taking the length of the tokens then we have here a versus sign in the middle of the two agent sections and here we have the same for the agent 2 the model 2 temperature of model 2 encoding llm for model 2 and um, area and so on so let's save it now to visualize this and now here uh, as i didn't put my real openai api key we see here the message that i was telling you before so if the user don't put their api key they will see this okay i went and i put here my api key it's hidden luckily i will hide this now and now i see here what i was telling before okay i have for the agent one this left part of here and for the agent two this configs of here and by default it starts with openai gpt 3.5 turbo but i can choose here for example gpt4 turbo and here the same for agent two i can put here gpt4 for example i can change the temperature and here if i expand this expandables i see here the system message for the agent one okay i can make this even larger so this is the system message the default one and here is the human message the default one as well and a very important here there are the placeholders for the variables to put the board state in these two formats but this is basically the default instructions and here for the agent 2 as well so the user can go here uh, can see how it behaves with the default ones and then the user can go here and for example delete some part uh, change it or do anything that they want okay so they can modify these parts of here these are text areas and you can delete or modify introduce any text here so one can start with the default that it works and then it can try to improve every prompt here or put the same prompt in both parts and try to see if gpt4 turbo versus gpt4 or any other combination of models which is better or if the largest temperature is better so you can compare different things having some other like the same prompts or the same models let's say and whenever you have both prompt template defined you can hide this to have more space in the ui and now we'll be defining here all the sections of the game uh, that the game engine will be updating so let's go to the code again and here we have the game display section and we start creating some columns calls one so every new part of columns i call it call zero calls one calls two and this is only to define the buttons the play and stop buttons so i creating here four columns and uh, the first and last one will be empty and this of the middle will be to define these two buttons that we will see now so in the first part of here the calls one this one of here I'm defining uh, if the API key has been introduced, then put here the streamlit play button to start the game. And whenever this button is pressed, this start will be true, so we can start the game. And then whenever the game is being played, we will be able to stop it by pressing this is stop button. And this will be stopping the logic. So the next turn, it will be stopped if the game was still playing, but the user wants to stop the game. 
Now, next to these buttons, we'll be defining the space of the game board. So we'll be defining these five columns, but only we'll be using three of them. These middle ones are to create some spacing between them. So this one will be the left one for the agent one uh, messages and score. The middle one will be for the turn counter and the game board. And the right one will be for the agent two score and messages. So here, uh, agent one space, we're creating it as an empty container. Then we are creating the turn counter as turn zero and board images space also this container with this default image that we created before. The application will be always loaded with that initial image that we have here. If you remember this 000 turn PNG. So this will be the starting frame for the application always. Then will be all of these containers will be sent to the game engine and they will be updated with the new information. And then the calls to space four, okay, this later column, the right one, will be for the agent to space for the images and score of it. Now here we have the space for the metrics, okay? So the plot space at the bottom of the page, this will be the last part. We put here a divider to have a line separating the game space with the metrics one. And we'll pass also this plot space container to the game engine. And here, whenever the user defines all the configurations and press the play button, this is star will be true and we will be calling the game engine to start all the game logic. And this will be running for every turn until the user press the stop button or the game finishes. And this is the end of the application. So now we can already call the main function to run it. So let's save the code and let's go to the application again. So now we see here that it's updated. Now we can see the play button and the board with the initial configuration, the initial state turn zero and here there will be the metrics space but now they are empty because they will start whenever the game starts so now we have to make sure that everything is properly defined okay we have the api key from before uh, we have the agent one with the model the agent two with the model the temperatures the default prompts we can change it but the default ones are okay and if everything is properly set, we can press the play button. And now we have to wait for every turn to the agent one to do the call to the first model, uh, to receive the response. Then the agent two does the call to each model. And we can see here the first turn. And this is the message that the agent one has been returning. And you can see that they are always returning the arrow properly. And this arrow is detected here. So this is the action for every model. This is now turn three. And now here in the bottom, we can see already the metrics. So we can see, uh, okay, agent one has win. We can see it here and the balloons. So the metrics were already being displayed here. The blue line is the agent two, the green line is the agent one. We can see here which model was taking like um, more, more tokens, more cost in dollars, uh, the response time uh, for every turn here, the turn zero, one, two, three, and four, and also the sum of them. So in total, the agent one was taking less time to respond than agent two in this case. The cost was also higher for agent two and the completion tokens. So agent two was uh, GPT-4. So GPT-4 Turbo was uh, faster and it was cheaper as well. And uh, here we can see that the winner was agent one. So in this case, the Turbo won as well. But I have to tell you that they are not so good. So you can see that agent two lost because it hit its own body but Asian one was not doing it uh, so good. So sometimes they are doing better than in this case, but in general, at least with this prompt that I tried, they are not so good. So it's something that you can also try to improve, try to make them understand better the problem. You can see here in the reasoning how they are trying to understand their body positions and all other positions. So maybe with better prompt engineering, they could do better. Okay, so now that we have this website already running, uh, you could go and deploy this website as it is. So you can push this code into GitHub and deploy this website in the distributed cloud for free, as I did for the hackathon, for example. But we'll do also an extra step now. So if you remember, or if you haven't seen it yet, maybe, I already developed this project, this Enrique this Unit portfolio. You can create your own one, copying it from it. And also you can find here the YouTube link and Medium link. This is the YouTube video uh, explaining this project, how I did this homepage. And here you can find also the, the medium block. Basically, here we were building the homepage of this project. So starting it and deploying it just with the personal information and the links of your social media. And you could add also your curriculum vitae as a file to download. The idea is that you can create it and adapt it to your needs. So now we'll be adding this new project, this LLMs Arena project into this website to have all our projects, this LLMs one and all the future ones in the same website, not having all of them in separate websites. So anyone 
can go into your portfolio and check all of them together one by one, having it in the same portfolio website. So to do this, we have to go to VS Code in a new VS Code window and open this Streamlit portfolio, okay, the Streamlit portfolio project in a separate one. And we'll be uh, adapting this to include this new application into it. So the first thing will be to create uh, some folders. We have to create the pages folder, empty for now. Also the projects folder. So the idea is that in the pages, we'll have the Streamlit Python files for every new application. In this case, it's the app.py from today. And in the projects folder, we'll have subfolders for every project. So we'll only have the main Python file in the pages folder and all the other files for every subproject in its own subfolder for every project. So here I will already create the subfolder that can be called the same way as we call the previous folder of the repository, stllms arena. So we have now both projects here side to side. This is the stllms arena that we created before and this is the portfolio project. So uh, we have now to bring inside this folder of here the game engine, board plot, um, agents.py, 00 turn png, and that will be it. So we need the code files basically, skipping the app.py, that is the main file that we'll be putting in the pages folder. So we can copy them. And here uh, in the in this new folder for the project, we will be pasting these files inside the projects folder, but inside the stllms arena folder. Here they are collapsed because inside projects there is only a single folder, but it's a folder inside another folder. Okay. Now this file of here, the app.py, we have to copy uh, also, but put it here in the pages folder because this is the main page of this project. So we have to paste it in here and we will be renaming it. So we have to rename it like this, 01. Now we can put the icon of the page that it's an emoji. This is optional, but the way that the Streamlit is formatting the pages is um, it doesn't take the number. The number is only to order the pages in order. Then this icon, it puts it as an emoji and the underscores, it's replaced by spaces. And here we can put the LLMs arena. This will be the title of that page. And remember to put the .py and also here from our portfolio, we had here the home.py. So we can also uh, rename it to have it uh, properly displayed that title also. You will see now how it's seen in the website. So we have to put 00, 0 because this will be the first page of our portfolio. And now the icon, for example, this one for the home because it's uh, your presentation, but you can put any other icon if you want and home.py like this. OK, and this one, the main one has to be outside of the pages. So all of the pages of every project has to be in the pages, but the main one has to be outside of it. This is the entry point of the application and every new project that we'll be creating, we'll be creating here a new page file like 02 next project. I don't know what will be, but uh, whatever. OK, here as a Python file for that project and all of its other code and data and so here as a new folder like project 2 and uh, all of its code will go inside this okay like utils for the project 2 images and data and everything necessary for that other project will go into that project folder we can delete this for now because we are not creating that project now okay now we already bring everything here now we have to modify the page here because here it's not finding all the paths so they are broken we have to go and look for them and they are inside the um, projects stllms arena we have to fix all the paths now and now we can find this path because now the application is running from this main file of here okay not from this of here so the full application is running from this one of here and all the paths has to be according to this file of here all the agents board plot and so these files are in projects stlms arena same for agents okay now it's finding every path and also we will need to install the libraries in this other project that they will install only in the stllms arena project but tiktok and Lineshine and these libraries are not yet installed in this portfolio project we can do it now already so let's activate the virtual environment of this project that we already had scripts activate okay now pip install tiktok and we can copy it from before Streamlit was already there, but the other ones are new for this project. So let's install all of them here. Now we had the previous version of Streamlit of some months ago. So it's a good idea also if you created this project some months ago to update the Streamlit library. So pip install uh, upgrade Streamlit 
and there won't be any problem because it's uh, compatible. They didn't make any breaking change. Okay, now we have Streamlit updated to 1.29, that is the latest version. So now we have to update the requirements.txt file because it had the older libraries. So let's do pip freeze to requirements.txt and it will overwrite this one. Okay, if we close requirements.txt and we open it again, we will see that the new libraries are already here. For example, TikToken wasn't there before, OpenCV, OpenAI, and all the libraries. And also the previous ones have been also updated because we updated Streamlit. So now this will be the latest versions of everything. And we can check locally if they work, but they should be working. Let's save the changes made here. Now this should be working because we have TikTok installed. Now we have also one path to fix the game engine here. So board plot has to be also addressed from projects, ST, LLMs, Arena, board plot, and the same for agents. Now we have all the paths fixed. Now uh, we could already try to run this website to see if everything is working as expected. So we can go now and do a streamlit run. Now it's called 00. And if you do tap, it will have to complete the name of this file of here that with the emoji now it's complicated to write it. So let's see it, it's running here. Okay, we have here our portfolio, let's make it smaller. And now here in the left, we see home and the LLMs arena. So this menu wasn't here. And now that we have multiple pages here, we have the main page and one extra page in pages. It's creating this left menu. And we have here, as you see, we don't have the numbers and it's taking the title, the name of the file to put the title of every page. So it's using the emoji as the icon and the title without underscores, putting just spaces. And now we have everything as it was before working. And if we click here, it's loading now the new website. And uh, you can see here, I forgot to update the path from the this image. So it's a good way to check how to fix these errors. So this was in the main page here, uh, okay. So this was loaded here in this part of here. So now it's inside of uh, in projects, SD LMs Arena. Okay, that should be the only path I think broken yet. Let's check it. I'm not sure. And rerun. And okay, now it seems to work as before. Now it's loading and it's working as as before. Okay, we can try to run it as the, with the full parameters to check that it works and it's running, making calls to the API, in this case with GPT 3.5 Turbo, and yeah, it's working. It's putting all the metrics and it's running. So let's stop it already. Uh, it You can see that the stop button is also working, so we don't have to run it for all the iterations if you want to stop it before. And we can go back to the home. So now we have here our main page and the LLMs Arena. Now, if I push this code version, so this uh, version of the repository to the GitHub, it will be deploying again the website. So now it won't be only the home page with my information, but also this new project. And now we'll do a last final step. We have to create here a new folder. It's called utils. And here inside utils, we will create a new file called utils.py. This is intended to have some few methods that will be applied across all the projects, okay? In general, we want to create every project independent from the other ones. So for every new project, we will create a new folder having its own code. So we don't want to share much across them because we want to later to take one of these projects separately and be able to export it somewhere and don't crash all the applications. So we want to create the second and the third project and the fourth having their own code in their own projects folder. And if we remove or we modify any of them, we don't want to crash the other ones. But here in the utils, we'll have a few methods that will be the same across all the projects. So here in utils.py, we have to copy all of this, okay? Streamlit, and then this method of here, well, streamlit is not really necessary. We can delete it. And this contribution card method, okay, this function, and this dictionary with information. So this uh, of here, with all of this uh, CSS and so, is creating a custom card, a custom contact card, uh, you will see now. So let's save it. And whenever we import this to the, for example, to the left menu of the website, it will put our information and our image there nicely displayed. This is something that cannot be done uh, with any component of a Streamlit because that component doesn't exist. So we can create it customly with some CSS and HTML commands. If you don't know it, don't worry, just copy this from the GitHub or from the blog. 
and it will work for you. You only have to change your name, your title, the image URL, your profile image is very good if you can take it from GitHub. If you go to your GitHub account here in your main GitHub account, you can click here and copy the URL of this image. And this is the URL that you can paste here and then it will be updated whenever you update your GitHub image, it will be updated here. Also the LinkedIn and the GitHub URL if you want, or you can add other platforms if you want here. But I only put two of them because this is a small card. So now finally, in order to create that card in this project, in the new project, the LLMs Arena, we have uh, from utils, from utils.utils, uh, import contributor card and the dictionary as well that I call Enrique info but you can call it with your name and having this imported here we can now uh, go here in the sidebar and append here a divider okay and with markdown call this contributor card and it will be putting that HTML and CSS info. Okay, so basically it's returning all of this string that has this HTML code and it's replacing this information of here with your information. So it's filling this information details inside this HTML code. Now, if we save this, okay, and everything was properly set, if we go back to the website, uh, this was only in this part of here, you can see this card here. So now at every project here, you have your information, okay, your presentation. But at every new page of your website, for every new project, you will have your information here. So if someone goes directly to this URL of here, they will know, okay, who built this application. So they will have your contact here. So now that you have seen how to build your portfolio, you can create also your own data science, data analysis, AI engineering projects and add your information here so they can go to your LinkedIn, to your GitHub account. Okay, they are working the links. So you can add them here with your image and so. So that was everything. Now we have here not only the LM Arena working, but also this new project. We'll be adding more and more projects with the following videos. So make sure to subscribe because we'll be developing more projects, not only about AI engineering, but also some other interesting data and AI projects. And now also, if you have seen how to develop this application, you can improve it. As I said, adding more models, more functionalities if you want, or you can apply the same methodologies to make GPT-4, GPT-3 or other LM models to play other games. So you can apply this to solve other challenges, other games, especially if they are games by turns like chess, uh, checkers or other games that are played like turn by turn, not continuously. So understanding how to do this, you can now apply to other cases. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed and see you in the next video. Bye bye.